Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be upgrading my home network to a near enterprise level setup using Unify hardware from Ubiquiti. Just look at this epic amount of hardware I've got to play with. But first, before I dive in, let's remove this Windows 10 watermark with today's video sponsor, SCD Key. They offer cheap OEM Windows 10 keys, so just head over there using the link in the description down below. If you enter the discount code TPC at checkout, you'll save yourself an additional 15% off. The key is delivered immediately, and then you can search for Activate on your PC and input the code there. Click Activate and the watermark is gone. So back to the video. So the amount of tasks that I need to complete to have this all set up is actually quite overwhelming and logistically challenging. So the plan is to break the deployment into smaller stages, and this will therefore probably end up being a multi-part video. So my first mission is to get the heart of my new home network installed. Currently, I have the worst home network you can possibly have, which is to say that I'm just using the ISP provided hub for everything. It's limited ports, its Wi-Fi is mostly a myth, and it overheats frequently, taking all of my devices offline when it does. Right now, I have all of my devices connected directly to the hub, except for my NAS, which is currently using a direct 10 gigabit connection to my workstation PC. Unfortunately, I can't get rid of the hub for completely, as it's the ISP required modem that I'm not able to swap out, but I'm hoping that having it in modem only mode will mean that it will run cooler and be more stable. Fingers crossed. <laughs> the first part of my new network will of course be my new router, and yeah, that's how we pronounce it in the UK. But in this case, calling it a security gateway or firewall would probably be more accurate. This is the Unify Dream Machine Pro. I wanted to have a play with some higher end security features like intrusion detection and prevention, and just more serious threat management than you'd get on a consumer device. There are some cheaper options on the market that can do this stuff, but my research at the time was finding that many of them struggled with gigabit throughput, whereas the Dream Machine Pro is advertised as being able to do 3.5 gigabits per second. It's in a 1U rack mountable form factor, but I don't think it would look out of place just sat on top of a desk. I haven't decided exactly where this is going to live long term yet, but I'm leaning towards either mounting it under like a vanity table, or biting the bullet and buying a small rack. For connecting to the internet, it has a gigabit WAN port or a 10 gig SFP plus port, and you can use both for failover. I'm not entirely sure yet about load balancing, but it would be a shame if it couldn't. We then have a 10 gig SFP plus LAN port and an integrated managed switch with eight 1 gig LAN ports. I really wish that these had been PoE, Power of Ethernet ports, as in this really would be the ultimate all-in-one solution for most homes. The Dream Machine Pro is also a Unify Protect controller, so you can store a 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD and use it as your network video recorder. Where there used to be a power button on all the Ubiquiti devices, they now have a little touchscreen display, which is super cool. There's ventilation across the top of the front and rear, and it'll be interesting to see how quiet this is, because it is going to be living in my bedroom and I've paid a lot of attention to making sure my builds are near silent. The next part of my network is my new PoE switch. This is the USW 24 PoE, and it's a 24 port gigabit layer 2 switch with 16 PoE ports that can provide up to 95 watts of total PoE power. It only has a gigabit SFP uplink though, but I'm hoping to get a 10 gigabit switch at some point in the future. This is my first time ever using power over Ethernet, and I do really love the idea of only needing to run an Ethernet cable to an access port or camera for both power and data. This is a compact switch, but more importantly for me it has passive cooling, so it should be right at home here in my bedroom. To begin with, I'm just going to connect a single wireless access point to provide me with some Wi-Fi to get the network up and running. For this, I'm using a Unify Nano HD, and I got this before the new Unify Wi-Fi 6 access points came out but they are surprisingly affordable if I ever do upgrade. What I'm looking for on a wireless access point is consistency and reliability, as I use a wired connection for anything intensive, and I only need Wi-Fi coverage in a small area, so this Nano HD should be up to the task. So the new cables I bought have arrived. They were fairly inexpensive individually, but it really adds up quickly when you buy this many. But I feel like the money was well worth it, as these have really impressed me. It's been a while since I bought an Ethernet cable, so maybe I'm just out of the loop. But look, here's a comparison between my nicest looking old cable and these new Unify ones. It's a really thin Cat6 cable with a bendable end. It's kind of crazy to me that this tiny wire can carry both power and data. Hopefully these will make it easier to keep everything tidy and clean looking, as you can imagine how much cleaner 10 of these will look versus 10 of my older cables. So this is my little temporary setup. 
As the switch is passively cooled, it needs some space around it to radiate heat. So I've used some PC case feet, which have given everything a sort of a AV look. <laughs> I didn't film the initial setup process, as I needed minimal network downtime, but it ended up being ridiculously straightforward, and only took about 5 minutes with an app on my phone over Bluetooth. To give you a tour though, here is the Gigabit WAN connection to the Virgin Media modem. Here is an SFP Plus cable connecting the switch to the UDM Pro, and I needed to configure this port to run in Gigabit mode in order to get it to detect the switch. On the switch, I've just got a single PoE device for now, which is my Unify Nano HD wireless access point. The rest of these are all my non-PoE connected devices. The switch is looking a little empty, but I still have more devices and clients that I haven't yet plugged in. You can see how the thin cables allow for a much cleaner setup than traditional cables would have. Overall, as far as temporary setups go, I'm very happy with how this all looks. It's probably the nicest looking part of my bedroom. I couldn't help but do like a little space theme around the nebula screensavers, so I've got a little model Enterprise D and the cutest little chibi Lego ATST. <laughs> so I've been using this setup for about a week now, and my initial impressions have been mostly positive. I love the little displays, as they're a quick way to be able to get the basic info on how the network is doing. They synchronise, so if you navigate to an applicable menu on one, it automatically navigates there on the other, which is really cool. I haven't heard the fans on the UDM Pro at all yet, but I think, given how warm it feels, that it's because the enclosure itself is radiating most of the heat. I was worried that this setup would be loud, but so far for me it's been silent. I have zero experience with this level of networking gear, so I can't make any comparisons, but to me the control panel feels very prosumer, and that's just perfect for me. There's the right balance between a consumer-friendly user interface and the more advanced functionality. Take the intrusion prevention system for example. You can individually decide what you want on or off, or you can pick one of the five preset levels of protection. I'm probably just going to leave this on level 4, but for testing I had it on level 5. I also love that you can just click on a dangerous country and block connections to and from that location. With my gigabit internet connection, if I get some games downloading, I don't see any reduction in connection speed with the UDM Pro with level 5 IPS versus what I used to get with just the hub. One oddity though is that the CPU utilisation is reported differently on the touchscreen than how it is on the dashboard. Either way, it has no problem with gigabit WAN to land throughput, but the touchscreen does see it occasionally go above 80 and even 90%, so hopefully that's the inaccurate one. For networks, I've created four VLANs. There's my main LAN, which is what my PCs and my NAS are on, an IoT network, which is for less secure devices, such as smart home stuff and phones, a security network for the Unify Protect cameras in the future, and lastly, there's the guest network. Only the IoT and guest networks have Wi-Fi connections for now, as I'll be using wired networking for PCs and security cameras. So this is the network so far, and I'm really happy with how it's coming along. The garage that I do most of my filming in will be getting its own switch, access point and camera. But just for testing purposes, I thought I'd compare the wireless connection from my bedroom all the way out to the garage. I did record a little speed test of the Hub 4 prior to switching it to modem mode, and it manages to get 14 megabits per second from my bedroom to out in the garage. This was an unstable connection though, and frequently dropped. With the Nano HD, however, that increases to 41.49 megabits per second, but more importantly, I haven't experienced any instability yet. This is still slow, which is why the garage is getting its own access point, but it's still three times faster than the Hub 4. So the setup looks quite nice as it is now, but networking is a bit of a rabbit hole, so I spent days shopping to try to find the perfect rack for my room. As I don't have much space, I've decided on a shallow data cabinet style rack. One of the difficulties I've been having when selecting one is that most of them remind me of those PC cases that have extremely restricted front airflow. Like, I get the glass fronted ones look nice, but I think having more airflow would be better for the longevity of the hardware. So I've decided on this one made by Penelcom. It's 12U, which I'm hoping I won't outgrow anytime soon. It has a mesh front and three fan mounts up top, so heat shouldn't be a problem. It's available in black, but I've gone for this really clean looking powder coated white version. I've also picked some shelves, covers, and a keystone patch panel, and Penelcom have kindly offered to powder coat this in white for me so that everything matches. So this should all look really clean, but unfortunately that's going to take up to a month to arrive. And I can't wait a month to get this video up, as the channel has been inactive for far too long, so I hope you'll all be okay if this video ends here, even though I know it's been kind of a short one. In the next video, I'll install everything into the rack and get the garage part of the install done. So look out for that, and please let me know if you have any questions about what I've installed so far. This is my first networking video, so I don't know 
what's important for me to focus on or what content I should skip. So your feedback is really important to me. And so yeah, so if you like the video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Like me finally getting a rack. Um, thank you so, so much to my patrons for making all of this possible. You know, allowing me to buy the cables and the rack. And yeah, thank you all. And thank you everyone for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>